Dan Jibalisco here. Uh, a viewer recently asked me a very interesting question about parallel resonant circuits. How do you tell in a practical circuit when a parallel resonant circuit is actually tuned to resonance? You can calculate the capacitance and inductance values for a particular frequency and get a pretty close idea of what values to use in a practical circuit. But when you actually have a practical circuit, such as the one shown here, this happens to be uh, a uh, radio frequency amplifier circuit, uh, how do you tell that you've got resonance? Let's look at this parallel resonance circuit right here, comprising this coil, 2.5 microhenries and 200 picofarad capacitor. It's a variable capacitor. So you have a signal coming in at some frequency uh, determined uh, by the, well, which you have tailored this circuit to resonate at somewhere in the middle of the range of this variable capacitor. How do you tell uh, without actually listening to the output signal, either with an RF probe uh, or some other device, how do you tell that you've got resonance? Well, uh, if you have an oscilloscope, say, with a probe, where would you connect the probe so that you would know that you had resonance when you tuned this capacitor to a signal that was coming in? Well, you, in this case, you would connect the probe right here to the output terminal that isn't grounded in the secondary of this transformer. Now, there's another way to get output, and that is to just have a capacitor coming off of this point right here going to the output and dispense with the transformer entirely. If you do it that way, then you would again connect the probe right here at the top of the coil or the top of the tank circuit which is another name for a parallel resonant radio frequency circuit you'd connect your probe right up here and tune this capacitor until the probe received the maximum amount of signal if it were an oscilloscope for example the signal amplitude would peak at that point uh, that is how you would tell that you had resonance. You wouldn't want to connect it to the bottom of the uh, coil because that is actually connected to RF ground through this uh, bypass capacitor right here. You'd get zero all the time. You'd never get any signal here. The signal is you would get up here or alternative with the transformer, you'd get it here. Now in the olden days, of radio frequency transmitters that had tuned circuits like this in their power amplifiers, you could tell that you had resonance by connecting a milliameter here, right between the power supply, which might be instead of 12 volts, it might be 400 volts or 700 volts. You would connect a milliameter here, and you would know that you had resonance when that milliameter took a sudden dip. When there, you would normally get quite a lot of current through that milliameter, but when you achieved resonance, that current would dip. And the reason it would dip is because a parallel resonance circuit, when it is tuned to resonance at a certain frequency, exhibits a very high impedance, which would minimize the current that is drawn by this amplifier. So all of the signal would go to the output instead of being dissipated uh, as direct current and uh, possibly damaging the active amplification device. But this is an example of, an, of a uh, pre-amplifier for a radio receiver, actually. Here's the antenna. Here is a tank circuit right here, another tuned circuit. If you had a sufficiently sensitive oscilloscope, you could connect it right here to the top of the uh, tank circuit or the base right there 
but it would have to be a very sensitive circuit indeed. Not the base, I'm sorry. This is the gate of the field effect transistor, which serves as the active amplifying device. So you'd connect the probe to the top of this tank circuit, or if it were sensitive enough, your, your instrument, to the top of this one to tune it to resonance. You want to have them both tuned to resonance. So it makes sense to check them both. Uh, the only problem is you might have trouble detecting the signal at all here. So what you would do then is connect your probe right here, tune this tank circuit for maximum and this one for maximum, tune them simultaneously until you get the optimal setting for them both. That way you can tell in a practical scenario that you have resonance. You don't have to worry about what the actual value of this capacitor is. When Once you achieve resonance, all you need to know is that you've got resonance. And that's indicated by a maximum signal strength at this point right here. But again, you'd want to connect your probe through a capacitor to your oscilloscope or whatever so that you don't subject that probe to the power supply voltage through this resistor in this coil. That might not be so good for the oscilloscope. So that is where you connect a probe uh, with, to uh, an oscilloscope or something like that to determine that you have actual resonance. You'll get a peak when you get resonance there. You'll find this, this is figure 24-9, in this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition, available at Amazon.com, and a link to which I will provide in the description of this video. Stan Gibalisco, signing off for now. I'm not actually anywhere near Jupiter, because the magnetic field in Jupiter is so strong that it would cause radiation to fry my brain cells even faster than they're being fried by the benzodiazepines that my doctor has prescribed for me. So does that answer your question? I hope it helps. Uh, that's the best I can do for right now. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining my channel. And I hope you can put up with my silliness and shenanigans. Uh, it, it, it makes it a little more bearable for me. Hopefully it'll give you a few laughs. You can just laugh and think, wow, what a loon. Stan Jubilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.